What is up everybody out there? Chris and then the rest of the gang from Team Aquascape. And as you can tell, we are in somewhat of a urban area. We are on the north side of Chicago in the Lincoln Park neighborhood. And we are installing a 18 by 13 foot ecosystem pond with a huge waterfall off the side, a brick wall inside the pond with a patio that's gonna cantilever out over it, some circulation jets, all the bells and whistles on this one. So before we get started, let me kind of run through with you what's happening. the canvas that we will be working with. We've got a few paint marks on the ground just to delineate some of the stuff that's happening over here. We've got Corey, Kobe, and Luis, and Dan kind of doing some site prep work. That is going to be our main access point. Pond's gonna go there, bio falls, waterfall off the side. The pond shape will probably change a little bit. Skimmer's gonna go over there, circulation jets pushing away from this area. This circular area is going to be a future patio, but we have to get all this grass stripped out of here and get that on the truck. Again, this is our access so all the dirt everything is going to go out this way so here's our access you see we've got jack over there on the wheelbarrow it's pretty stinking tight down here as most of the time when we're working in the city so we really have to focus on the order of which we're doing things to try and prevent any double work and really use our brains on this one yes you heard it here i have to use my melon to figure out what's going to be the most efficient way to run this job we have to get material out material in all while trying to get it done in the appropriate amount of calendar days to stay on schedule and to make as little impact on the surrounding environment meaning the neighbors as possible so we're going to do our best to work this job site efficiently but it's going to turn out incredible so first things first let's get some site prep done and then we can get in here and start digging All right, so a little bit more demolition here. We've got this very much dying cherry tree that needs to come out. So we're just gonna hack this thing apart and hack it down to about three, four feet of trunk left. And then we're just gonna come in here and dig around it and then just yank it out. Cause there is going to be another maple that's gonna go at that point right there. We've got our pond through a laid out. We've got a lot of the grass out of here. We didn't take all of it out cause we're not really sure how big that patio for the customer is going to end up being. But this area in through here is where we're gonna build that brick wall so that that patio, when the customer decide to build it we'll cantilever out over the pond we have this back cove area our skimmer will set over there because of that this the location of the skimmer and the biofall sitting over there we're gonna need to put circulation jets in to push that water back across and all that stuff that falls onto the top water over into this intake area right here so strategic rocks a peninsula there and then maybe a little back area this I think this is gonna change a little bit to kind of have more of this serpentine shape and it'll meet up in with the patio but we'll have to be able to push that stuff from across that pond all the way over. So we got Jack up there taking the limbs. Now we're gonna start digging. of day one we got the hole excavated we ran into a few issues with access being one of them and then running into a few pieces of uh, concrete that we had to tear out fortunately we came across some really good digging conditions with some sand and some nice. dirt so i mean it was super easy and then the ruts we ran into were super soft so all we had to do is take a shovel right to them nice dan yourself you guys built this brick wall back here so we've got that that's holding back our berm for our three and a half foot tall waterfall so the hole is excavated we took into account the shape of our brick wall in here so that's great now liners in just in case it rains it's not going to make this sandy soil soupy but even though it will drain it's just nice to have the liner in kobe what do you think i love it it's gonna look awesome <laughs> <laughs> you're taking too long and looking at me <laughs> 
Okay, so we're at the start of day two. Things are happening. You can see it's a little wet down in the bottom, so we got a little bit of rain overnight, but that's not gonna slow us down at all. You can see we've got Dan, Luis, and then Jack D over here. We're gonna go ahead and start getting our brick wall built. While they're doing that, Kobe and Corey are over here installing the skimmer box. So one thing to remember when placing the skimmer in a pond is making sure that you're putting it in the spot where you're gonna really maximize the functionality of the skimmer. Because of the shape of this pond and the bio falls sitting right there and the skimmer sitting right there this would be a huge dead area over here so what we're going to do to alleviate that is actually put circulation jets in along this back side so we have two pumps one will sit on the back side or the left side of the skimmer if you were looking at the face of it from the patio area over here that will power the biofalls and then we're gonna have another pump sitting closest to us that will have a two inch line that spiders in through here we'll probably put a circulation jet in here and then we're gonna put a handful of them along that back wall pushing stuff across the pond and out in front of that brick wall that they're building. So we just took that into consideration when specking out this project, which is the reason why we're going with two pumps. So circulation is super key to the success of an enclosed system like this. So you want to make sure that you're avoiding any of those dead spots in the pond where possible. So I know you guys hear us talk about it all the time in our videos, but that is a big reason why we are doing this and not sacrificing the overall aesthetic or the shape of the pond. So we just want to make sure that we put all the necessary components in to really set this pond up for success for the future. So one thing that we've started doing while building all of these walls inside the pond is just kind of dry setting. Once we get the bottom course set, we wanna double check our height over here. So we're gonna go ahead and we've got what we feel like is the appropriate amount of courses in here. Now I'm gonna bring the transit stick over and figure out where water level is. So one thing I wanted to mention, which might be a helpful tip for some of you guys and girls out there, tip or trick that we do is when setting the skimmer in place, we base everything of water level right? Because we want to be able to maximize the functionality of the skimmer. So when we are setting our skimmer, we always set water level right at this screw hole on the face plate. So what I'm about to tell you is going to base everything off of this screw hole, okay? As being water level. So when we are establishing water level, I'm using the transit stick, which you see Kobe have over there, and that's that rotary laser and it's casting out an even plane that will never move. That's what water level is. What I want to tell you now is to help you when installing the skimmer and maybe alleviate some of the guests work or the back and forth when digging your hole, putting the skimmer in, pulling it out to make sure you get it right at the right level the first time you dig the hole. The distance from this screw hole all the way down to the bottom of the skimmer is 19 and a half inches. So what we do is we take whatever water level is on the transit stick and we move the receiver up on the stick 19 and a half inches from where, wherever water level was previously set at. And what that does is that tells us how deep we need to dig the hole so that the bottom of this skimmer sits at the correct elevation. So what Corey and Kobe are doing is they're excavating out the hole for the skimmer and they have the transit stick set 19 and a half inches compensating for that distance from optimal water level on the skimmer all the way down to the bottom. So as they're digging they're using that stick rather than putting the skimmer in there and then trying to line the bottom of the stick up with the screw hole they can bring the transit stick over and continue to check the depth of their hole rather than pulling the skimmer in and out in and out trying to figure that out. So 19 and a half inches, the distance from the bottom of this up to that screw hole. And that's the depth of the hole to get your skimmer set at proper water level. So you can hear by the sound of the skimmer, they are dang close. All right, one of the challenges is to get these, let's see, four, eight, 10 pallets down this street, down the alley, over here to the left, and then down in front of the garage because that's where everything is coming in. So, you know, to say this is a logistical nightmare would be an understatement, but I think we've got ourselves covered with the amount of labor and man hours built into this job but we just have to make sure that we're staging material in the right place so we're gonna probably be double handling triple handling some of this material but we're gonna try and avoid that so this is a definite a challenge anytime we're working in the city so not that we're not used to it but it doesn't make it any more enjoyable when you are used to it anyways onward and upward let's keep building the pond huh start slapping these boulders down and through there in through the garage and back out into the yard. So.
Who's gonna give the little progress update today, huh? Who wants it? Killer day. Killer day. We got probably, let's see, so we've got this beautiful brick wall done. Well, it's not done done because Jack decided to <laughs> take a seat on the job, sit down. I'm sorry, what? We wanted a meeting. A meeting? Yeah. I never saw you on the list of invites. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll leave. So anyways, yes, so we have this unilock wall. This is that retaining wall that's going to hold back the base material and as well as hold up the patio. It'll be about a 14 foot diameter irregular bluestone patio. We have some lights cut into the wall. So we've got a circulation jet over there. We've got one behind Jack, two lights cut into this wall. This weathered limestone is really turning out much nicer than I thought it was going to, which has a lot. I know Dan had high hopes as well as Corey did, but it helps. We had a good operator. We were pretty efficient with everything. We still have a hell of a lot of dirt to move from back there, back behind me to finish up that berm. But I think Brian's going to show up tomorrow and come in and start working with these guys. I'm gonna take the day off and work on another project. So I'll be interested to see if these guys can hit the finish line tomorrow or if there's a little bit of work left. I think they can do it. What do you guys out there think? Leave a comment below. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a wrap up day two. We have yet to use the spider crane, which is sitting back in the back behind JD. So it was a good investment. Yeah, <laughs> old girl back here still gets after it. Old and man, reliable. yep, old reliable. Old trusty Gus was able to set this big 3,000 pound rock and then everything else in here. Obviously that's a credit to the operator, but also credit to old girl back there. So great job, everyone. Wrap of day two. Kobe's hungry. All right, so listen, that's the end of episode one. The next episode is gonna showcase a finished product as well as a great product overview as how the project got put together, sharing with you some of the specs, but also giving you all those beauty shots you're looking for. Till next time, we'll see you later.